الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Brothers and sisters, it is definitely uh, a great time when I uh, get to do this I, I didn't realize how much uh, enjoyment I am receiving from having these brothers continue to dig deeper graves for themselves all whilst they perceive the exact opposite if anything, wallahi, these are lessons to be learned these are lessons to be learned about the perception of Muslims, the perception of human beings, how how different and how much at odd we could be with each other. I make a video and it is perceived by so many people a certain way. And they make a video and it's perceived by so many people in a completely different way. And everybody believes that they're upon the truth. Everybody believes that the other party doesn't know what they're talking about. Everybody claims that the other party is lying. Everybody claims that the other party is making false allegations. And, uh, you know, when, when, when you have situations like this, the people are going to be divided into two categories. Those who are sincere and who are truly seeking the truth and those who are uh, uh, people that just, they love drama and they, their objective is to, they have, they have ulterior motives. They, 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 they come at you from a foundation of enmity. And therefore, whatever you say doesn't register. You see? So these brothers made these videos about my Arabic mistakes. And I responded, and I've proven, I believe beyond the shadow of doubt, that those mistakes, while I admitted some of them, we can all agree that they don't mean that I don't know the grammar. Nor do they mean that I am the greatest uh, Arabic-speaking individual out there. We all know that much. I've never claimed otherwise. But those who are honest, and I don't know where they are, from their followers, I can't find any honest people. From their followers, I'm yet to find an honest person who's these say, okay, you know what? Yeah, I think, okay, these guys were tripping. Because I clearly exposed those lies uh, where they've seen me say, make a correction or make the right uh, you know, gr uh, conjugation, but they dismiss that. On purpose. So this brother over here, uh, he thought that he has something going on. And I love, I absolutely love how the people of Bid'a, uh, they, they are so ignorant of the Sunnah that they think that other people don't know when in reality it is they who don't know. So he got excited about catching something. Supposedly he caught something that's a big deal. Oh, Abu Masab. He, he did himself so much damage. So much damage. Emotional damage was made. Supposedly because I uh, claimed that Sheikh Fawzan, uh, Hafizahullah, is a liar. Even then, the titles of these videos are pretty funny. And I'm, I'm going to use the same methodology in naming my videos. So let me show you how this brother over here is quoting the book. First of all, he's quoting a Salafi Sheikh. And the Salafi Sheikh ta'liq on and uh, Kitab al-Sunnah of Imam Barbahari. A book that fundamentally destroys these guys' foundations. So those guys are willing to accept uh, our book as a resource. This book is, is not from their books. This book is not a Diobandi book. They're willing to compromise and now use our books as authoritative and Sheikh Fawzan as authoritative because when it's convenient for them, they will cite and quote Sheikh Fawzan in whatever agrees with their uh, belief, supposedly. And when, when convenient, they will turn around and say that Sheikh Fawzan is nothing but a, a, a Wahhabi. He's one of these, you know, scholars for dollars and whatever names they have for them. He's just another Wahhabi Salafi Sheikh who, according to them, is deviant. But now because it's in their uh, uh, favor and convenient for them, they're citing Sheikh Fawzan. Little did they know, though, that they don't even, even this one, Ya Mawlana, what was his name, Abdul Halim? Or is the other one is Abdul Halim? I don't remember, Osman. I think this guy's name is Osman. Whatever the names are. Even in this one, you failed again. Every time you think that you're exposing me, you're actually exposing yourself and you're exposing your ignorance and you're proving to the people beyond the shadow of doubt that you guys are just clowning all day. You have no real substance 
no real knowledge, my brother, for Allah's sake. I intend good for you. I wish good for you. Have mercy on your miskeen soul. Stop, ya akhi, stop this campaign and stop lying. Your channel is a filthy channel. All your videos are, are void of beneficial knowledge. All it is is attacking people and it's all based on lies and it's all based on a corrupt aqidah. And because you have nothing of, of value to discredit the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, you resort to finding the mistakes of many Salafi du'at and Salafi shuyukh, supposedly mistakes according to you because you are an ahbal. And you think you're putting them out to the world and unfortunately your followers, يعني, subhanallah, may Allah grant them in, in some intellect, may Allah grant them some hidayah to be able to see what you guys are really about. But unfortunately, when you have a, a, a funky shepherd, then you will get some uh, monkey sheeps, uh, sheep. And that's what it seems to be the combination of you and your followers. I was reading the comments that the people left on your video. <laughs> some of the funniest things in the world. Anyways, let's see what this brother is going. By the way, the background story is when I called out uh, uh, Maulana Batatis, uh, who said that the Prophet ﷺ is probably crying in his grave. And the Prophet ﷺ is hurting in his grave. And I said, you have no right to speak about that because that is from the knowledge of the unseen. Now watch how he's going to go around the globe to find something that is completely irrelevant and dismiss the probably crying and give his own interpretation that he has no foundation for it from the Quran and the Sunnah or from the Sahaba to try to find a twist in order to justify their deviance. This is an exact. This is why they called Ahlul Ahwa'i wal Bid'a, and they're Ahlul Firqa, the people of division, the people of whims and desires. Wallah, ladhi la ilaha ghairuh. These are the people of whims and desires. They're driven by their whims and desires. They're not driven by evidence. They're not driven by haq. They're not driven by sincerity. They're not driven to please Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They're driven by their motives, and their motives are whatever floats their boat they're going to uh, uh, jump on that boat yeah check it out check it out brothers and sisters this is a very short hard hitting straightforward video i'm gonna get hard hitting straightforward video straight into the topic abu musab has come out yesterday and accused maulana abdul halim of two grave things firstly he's accused him of lying against allah and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu Yep, and I stand by that accusation. He lied against Allah and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And number two, he's accused him of a major sin. Now, I want you to listen uh, directly to Abu Mus'ab so that you can understand why he's accusing him. And then inshallah, I'm going to reply. With such a reply, Abu Mus'ab will have to do one of two things which I'm going to mention, inshallah. Uh, right, so... Wait, let, let me give you a heads up. Put it on here. I'm not going to do either of the two things. Because you didn't prove anything and you will not prove anything. Hide for a little bit and let's see, brothers and sisters, who are we uh, dealing with? What a nice tablet. Yeah, yeah, Maulana. Rasulullah is probably, probably. How does that work? How do you say Rasulullah is probably? You know what probably means? You know the probability of something, whether something is probable or not. So you cannot conclusively say that he's crying. You cannot conclus conclusively say he's not crying. You want to insinuate that he's crying, but you're not sure. So you're speaking about the unseen. You're equating al, al adhiyah to Allah and His Messenger with crying. And therefore, you're, you're making up things that are not part of the deen of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu wa taqaddasat asma'uh. And instead of this uh, Sankuta Pashta Lalulu, 
being honest and fearing Allah and saying, yeah, Mawlana Abdul Halim should probably have avoided this probably crying thing and he should have just said that he is hurt in his grave because that is the point of contention, the translation of the word uh, adhiya and idha. That could have been, uh, okay, we could have dealt with that, but the point of contention is he's probably crying. Now watch the audacity of this brother, how he will justify what he knows is wrong, what he knows is baseless in the Quran and the Sunnah. But because, you know, they are all uh, birds of the same type, so they uh, bicker with each other. Yes. This is from the message that you have only applied to Islam in the first place. What have you just heard there? He's accused Mawlana Abdul Halim of lying against Allah and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's accused him of a major sin, obviously, because he mentions... It is a major, major sin. sin. He's quoted two verses of the Holy Quran. Yeah, we know. Yeah, we know. And, well, these are parts of verses. And now, my brothers, what has he accused him for? He said, because Mawlana Abdul Halim has said that the Rafida that he was protesting against, right? And he was, you know, uh, alerting the Ummah to be aware. And he was trying to get this uh, uh, movie, which was blaspheming against the Sahaba and which was attacking the Sahaba and which was based on racism, etc. He was getting this banned, right? And Abu Musab has an issue with this methodology. Anyway, Mawlana Abdul Halim... Of course I have an issue with that methodology because that is not how you go about it. You defend the, the Prophet وسلم, and his family and his wives and his daughter and so on and so forth. You defend them as per the way of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. As per the way of the Sahaba. Not by following the way of the disbelievers by protesting in the street and screaming like your lungs are about to pop. Definitely not that way. But that's besides the point. I don't want to get, uh, you know, go off track. He's talking about those people who slander, who attack, who curse the Sahaba, radiyallahu anhum, and he's saying that this causes grief and pain to the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa He's saying it causes grief and pain to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa What is your evidence for that? What is your evidence that it causes grief and pain to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Because I'm going to show you that you don't, you don't even know what, what the heck you're talking about. And this pain is not restricted to his uh, uh, worldly life. It is also causing, uh, it also causes pain to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even after he's left his worldly life while he's in his blessing. My Focus on the words, it causes pain. It grave, right? And he said, the Prophet ﷺ is probably crying, meaning it's very likely because when you're in... Uh, now listen, now listen, listen to the falsafa. You, wa you want to know, akhwan, 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 my brothers and sisters, my beloved brothers and sisters, do you know why they called Ahlul Kalam? Do you know why they called them Ahlul Kalam? Ahlul Kalam because they use philosoph philosophical fundamental principles and foundations to address the religious matters of the deen. And they give precedence to their aql over the naql. They give precedence to the intellect over textual evidence. And there's a classic example for you right now. Watch the intellectual gymnastics and the intellectual justification to attribute crying to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because in, in, in doing Qiyas uh, versus uh, humans, listen to this. Pain or you're in grief, especially regarding those that you love the most, like as well. When you're in pain or you grieve, especially about those that you love the most, yeah? And the wives of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the close uh, companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, it's very highly likely. So he says these two things. It's, it's very highly likely what? It's very highly likely that you will cry. Okay, if you, if someone spoke about your family, uh, by the way, I, I wouldn't cry. So as a man, I wouldn't cry if someone spoke about my family or someone cursed my mother or someone cursed my wife or whatever. I would handle business like a man. I don't know about you, Habibi, but if you go to the corner and start going, wah, wah, then that's just, that's just you.
You know what I'm saying? I don't know how you guys are brought up. I don't know uh, what type of masculinity uh, masculinity do you have, if you have any, or what type of manhood principles are you uh, raised upon, if you have any. But I definitely don't go to the corner and start crying and, and you know, doing whatever you're doing. I handle my business as a man. Regardless, regardless, you're assuming that if someone is hurt, or if someone is offended when his family is being verbally abused, then it's very likely that they will cry. And so now you're speaking about Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who's the nature of his life in the grave, in the barzakh, we don't know what it's like. We know that he's alive in the barzakh, the, the al-hayatul barzakhiyya. And it is specific to the prophets and the messengers, unlike that of, of the human beings. The earth is not allowed to consume their bodies. And every time somebody sends salah upon the prophet وسلم, the angel will deliver it to him. His soul is returned to him so he can return to salam. We believe in whatever the ayat and the hadith mention regarding the subject matter. Everything you're saying has absolutely no basis. And what you will use as a quotation from Al-Imam Al-Barbahari and the Sharh of Sheikh Fawzan also do not support or justify your lies, the uh, Mawlana Abdul Halim's lie and you continuing to lie and you insist on lying, doubling down and still claiming that the Prophet Wasallam is very likely probably crying in his grave. Ya kathab, ya, ya sayyi al-adab. يا من تسيء الأدب مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم you ill-mannered human being with Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم for you to accuse him and allege and lie against him and assume that he is crying because some Shia made a movie is utter insanity is next level insanity and it's a lie and it continues to be a lie and you don't have the courage or the honesty or the, the sincerity, you're not genuine enough to even call your own brother out for this blunder and for this lie against Allah's messenger. You're trying to justify it by using logic. Okay, brothers, you know when you're hurt, you know how you go to the corner and cry. Therefore, it is very likely that Allah's messenger وسلم, is also crying because they were speaking ill about his wife Aisha and about so on and so forth. Ya akhi ya kadab, ya ta'ban. Istihya, Sheikh. Have some, have some, some haya, have some shyness, have some modesty, have some brain for Allah's sake. Stop lying against Sheikh Fawzan also. You also want to deceive your miskeen followers and make them uh, think that I'm going against Fawzan and that I'm saying that Fawzan is like. <laughs> and you had one of these idiots of yours coming to my channel saying, Well, oh, Sheikh Fawzan said the same. Are you saying Sheikh Fawzan is a kafir? Yeah, Majnoon, I did not even say that Abdul Halim was a kafir for me to claim to pass takfir on Sheikh Fawzan for saying whatever he's, we, we will quote later. We did not even go there. But this is the, this is the level of ignorance and this is the, the lack of knowledge that you and your followers possess. And then you come and troll us and you, you rant all day and you talk all day and you're happy with these videos that you make. Yeah, you are lovely. Yalla, yalla, adi, adi. Let's hear. Let's hear the brother. The Prophet is probably crying or that he is in pain in his grave. These two things are lies upon Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Bravo, and their lies it was. That this is talking about Allah without knowledge. It and is. And then he says this is the effects of innovation yes. in, in creed. So these are the two, three things. And then he says this is a major sin. So all these things that he's applying to Mawlana Abdul Halim now, my brothers, I'm going to show you, inshallah, where this is directly, directly applicable to Sheikh Fawzan. Allahu Akbar. So Allahu Akbar, what a liar you are. Allahu Akbar, and look, he's happy with himself. If the only way this will make sense, if, if you can find me a book and Sharh of Sheikh Fawzan, where he says that the Messenger of Allah is probably... The Messenger of Allah is probably crying in his grave or you're going to tell me that the Messenger of Allah is hurting in his grave. When you find a quotation of Sheikh Fawzan saying one of these two, then what you said right now would be true. Akhi, you are lying again. You will not be able to find anything of Sheikh Fawzan saying, ever saying that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is probably crying in his grave or that he's hurting. He's going to say something completely different, which we never denied and we never discussed and we never addressed. But are you an honest person? No. 
Are you followers knowledgeable to understand that you're a dishonest person? No. So you are all, you know, handling business together, enjoying your journey to the hellfire, unless Allah Azza wa Jal wishes to forgive you. And we hope Allah does. And Allah shows mercy to you and admits you to paradise instead of the hellfire because of your crimes against the deen. We hope this is the case. We hope this is the case. But the way you're going, Habibi, hmm, you're definitely not one of the, uh, you're not on the safe sect methodology. Abu Musab was not aware of this. He oh, I am this in haste aware because he has not once again read his own books. Akhi, how do you speak? How do you speak about matters of the unseen with such confidence? How do you know whether I know the subject matter or not? How do you know whether I have read this book or not? How do you even say these things with confidence when you have absolutely no idea what you're talking about? Yeah, Akhi, inta, there's no stopping for your nonsense. Yeah, Akhi, are you not going to, you know, uh, rectify your condition? Ya Mawlana Zuzi, Wallah Aib. Habibi, know where to draw the line. Everything has a limit. You're going overboard. Have mercy on your miskin soul. According to Abu Mus'ab Sheikh Fawzan, all these things that he said on Mawlana Abdul Halim, they apply to Sheikh Fawzan as well. Liar. What have I got? I've got here Ithaf al Qari. These are the ta'liqat of Sheikh Fawzan upon Sharh al Sunnah. Okay? Upon Sharh Sunnah and page number 180 and 181. Right? All right. I'm going to go straight into the words of Sheikh Fawzan because a friend of ours was going to cover the, uh, 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 the Ibarat and the uh, text of Barbahari directly, the actually Matan. So the matan? actual words of Sheikh Fawzan, where he's explaining that Matan. What we're going to do, inshallah, is I'm going to read those words out to you and translate them to you. What does he say? He says, Man yasubbu sahabata, Whoever slanders, swears at, insults, abuses the sahaba. Faqad aadhan nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallama fi qabrihi. Indeed, he has hurt the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his blessed grave. Li'annahu Sallallahu Okay, let's stop here. So, this is now where it's gonna get very evident the deviance of these people. Notice now the translation that he chose for Ida. And notice now that Ida had nothing to do with what uh, Abdul Halim was saying. Abdul Halim said the Prophet is probably crying in his grave. The Prophet is hurting in his grave. And the term that we know from the Quran and the Sunnah is known as Adiyya or Ida. And Ida does not suggest that. You know why? Because in the same ayah that speaks about Ida, and I'm going to show you the book. Let's close this guy. Let's go right over here. Where is it? Here. Yeah. Okay. This is the book. Well, can you guys see it? Yeah, you can see it. Here, let me make it big. All right. So listen now. I'm not going to let him read because his reading is just irritating. Look at the ayah that is cited here. Okay. لِأَنَّهُ صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يرضى أن يسب أصحابه. The Prophet صلى الله عليه is not pleased that his companions are cursed. وَقَدْ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ لَعَنَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَأَعَدَّ لَهُمْ عَذَابًا مُهِينًا Type. So here we have adhiyya being attributed to Allah and to the Messenger. According to this miskin, according to this miskin, if adhiyya is equal to crying in his grave and hurting, then he just claimed that Allah Azza wa Jal is also crying and that Allah Azza wa Jal is hurting. So he attributed crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is a statement of kufr that will take you outside of the Islam. And I'm not saying that this is what he means because he is as ignorant as a doorbell and you expect ignorant people to make blunders and do statements of kufr all day and all night without knowing what they're saying. We hope Allah will pardon him and forgive him for his stupidity. Nevertheless, this is a statement of kufr because if idha, if adhiyya means is equal to, as you claimed, ya ta'ban, as you claim that it's equal to probably crying and hurting, then you just accused Allah Azza wa Jal of also probably crying and hurting. If you say no, adhiyya does not have to mean that, then everything that you've been claiming has already been destroyed. 
You can no longer say that what I said about Abdul Halib lying against Allah and his messenger is now applicable to Sheikh Fawzan because this is what Sheikh Fawzan was referring to. And let's get deeper into this ayah. What does this ayah mean? إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ لَعَنَهُمُ اللَّهِ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَأَعَدَّ لَهُمْ عَذَابًا مُهِنَا The proper translation is not hurting, not probably crying. Indeed, those who abuse Allah and His Messenger. Allah has cursed them in this world and the hereafter and prepared for them a humiliating punishment. Now, listen to this now. Uh, this is the tafsir of Ibn Kathir. Okay? Uh, and I'm going to focus on the parts that are most relevant. Let me make this a little bigger so you could read properly. Okay. Uh, so, some of the tafsir say that this was in, refer, in reference to the musawwirin, those who make images. In the ladina Allah wa Rasula, those who make images. In, in, uh, images. in the Sahihain from Sufyan bin Uyayna, uh, Uyayna, and the Zuhri, and Sa'id bin Musayyib, and Abi Huraira, Kala, Kala Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Yakulullah, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Yu'dhini ibn Adam, the son of Adam, abuses me. Yasubbu dahr, he curses time. Wa ana dahr, and I am the one in charge of time. I turn over, I rotate the night and the day. So according to this individual, the hadith says, يُؤْذِينِي ibn Adam, the son of Adam uh, abuses me. If abuse, if إِذَا and أَذِيَّ is equal to, once again, it's equal to probably crying and hurting, then he just claimed that Allah Azza wa Jal is also probably crying and hurting and you have to apply this embedded meaning to both because the ayah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَرَسُولَهُ مَعْطُوفَةَ عَلَىٰ لَفْضُ الْجَلَالَ الله. So they're coming and they're being put together in the same context, in the same sentence. Mawlana, halwa, halwa, how are you going to get out of this one, Habibi? What is your way out of this one, ya galbi? Do you really think you're going to be able to do more gymnastics, to lie some more? How much lies are you willing to do? How many lies are you willing to make? How, how much are you willing, deep, how deep are you willing to dig? Before you find yourself in a pit from the pits of fire, so you can continue following your whims and desires. To champion your Diobandi school of Darul Uloom instead of championing the Quran and the Sunnah. So if you read, look, whether you go to the Tabari or Ibn Kathir, all of them are going to revolve around the same matter. It's all around the same matter. This is those who uh, verbally abuse Allah and uh, the Messenger, or the Baghawi, or the Sa'di, or the Tafsir al Muyassar. All of them are speaking about the same thing. Look, Sheikh Sa'di says, وَهَذَا يَشْمَلْ كُلُّ أَذِيَّةِ كُلُّ أَذِيَّةِ This includes every type of abuse. قَوْلِيَّةَ أَوْ فِعْلِيَّةَ Whether verbal or action. مِنْ سَبِّنْ أَوْ شَتِمْ Whether you curse or you, you, you defile. أَوْ تَنَقُّسْ له Or any type of belittlement uh, of him. Or his religion, or anything that could be considered a type of abuse. So, this is in regards to the people saying things. So, if someone were to verbally abuse the Sahaba of the Prophet, then yes, this is something that, that uh, this is a type of abuse against Allah and His Messenger. And it's extended until Yawm Al Qiyamah, it's forever. And we never addressed that issue. We never denied that issue. We didn't, we didn't even delve into this issue. Our whole issue revolves around the statements. He's probably crying in his grave. He's hurting in his grave. You cannot extract crying and hurting from any of those ayat or any of those ahadith. So, how are you going to deal with it now? <laughs> Because the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la yarda, is not pleased with ay yusabba ashabuhu is, He is not pleased with his companions being abused and slandered and Agreed. sworn at and insulted. Yes, yes sure. Then Sheikh Fawzan goes on to say, وَقَدْ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ لَعَنَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَأَعَدَّ لَهُمْ عَذَابًا مُهِينًا Surah Al-Ahzab verse 57 Then he says Why did he not translate the ayah? يَا مَوْلَانَ اسْتَنْكُ لَبُجِّ مَلُوفْ لَحْهُ لَهُ 
Why did you not translate the ayah? Is it because you, you know that if you use abuse, you're going to be exposing yourself? Is it because you don't know how to translate the ayah? It, Allah knows your intentions. You could lie to us. You, obviously lying is a skill that you have perfected, mashallah, tabarakallah. Allah knows the reality and the truth in your heart. Allah knows. Why did you not translate the ayah? Did you forget? I, I, am, I am told as a Muslim to give you the benefit of the doubt. Wallahi, I will give you the benefit of the doubt that you forgot to translate the ayah conveniently. But if this is not the case, then you have exposed yourself once again. Because if you were to translate this ayah or explain this ayah according to the Mufassirin, then everybody's going to tell you, hey, 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 wait a second. Where did you get this for probably crying and hurting in the grave? And how are you going to apply this to Allah when the, when the ayah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُذُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ How? Okay, the meaning of that, those who, you know, uh, um, well, who attempt to harm Allah and His Messenger sallallahu Oh, he did translate it. Okay, see, alhamdulillah, my benefit of the doubt came in uh, in perfect timing. So those who attempt to harm, okay, those who, so now you're equating attempting to harm will, will cause someone to cry in a grave and someone hurting? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cursed them in this world and the hereafter and has prepared for them um, uh, you know, uh, 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 an azab which is going to disgrace them, humiliating azab. Now, he says, فَالَّذِي يَسُبُّ الصَّحَابَةَ So, based on the verse, ha, ha, ha. whoever slanders the sahaba, indeed he has caused harm to Allah and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He has caused harm. So, so here is. So now we are on the same page. Now you're saying so your choice of words for al adiyya is cause harm. You tell me once again and for the last time how does cause harm equate probably crying and hurting? Subhanallah. What does he say? This is not specific and exclusive and restricted to the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alaihi Wasallam. This worldly life. بَلْ يُؤْذِيهِ وَهُوَ فِي قَبْرِهِ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهِ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ Alaihi Wasallam. Rather, slandering and insulting the Sahaba also causes pain and grief to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whilst he's in his blessed grave. What do you, yeah, Akhi, what do you mean causes pain and grief? What do you mean causes pain and grief? Adiyya and Adiyya. What, what trans, what tafsir are you using? What tafsir are you using to, to make this assertion? To give this interpretation? On what basis are you saying that? Ya Sheikh. Ya Sheikh Dullal. Wa Sheikh Ahl al Kalam. What are you using? What give me one of the mufassirin that justifies your interpretation and Maulana Abdul Halim? Give me one mufassir in this entire ummah from among the most deviant Ashaira and Jahmiya and Mu'tazila who will say that this means the Prophet cries in his grave or that he's hurting in his grave. Hurting in his grave. After he has passed away, alayhi salatu was salam. وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ هَذَا فَهُوَ مَلْعُونٌ He says, whoever does this, نَسْأَلُ اللَّهَ الْعَافِيَةَ Lied upon Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sheikh Fawzan has done what? He has committed a major uh, a sin. Sheikh, Sheikh Fawzan didn't commit a major sin. You are committing a major sin right now by slandering the Sheikh, by lying against Allah and His Messenger, by misquoting the ayah, mistranslating the ayah. You didn't even actually, I go back on my words. You didn't really translate the ayah. You gave a rough translation, a convenient translation of your own. You didn't translate the ayah properly. You actually dismissed the proper translation of the ayah and you chose words that are in line with your preconceived notions based on your deviant views that you've already adopted from the first time you saw a, a monkey eating a banana. From that day onwards and you've been on that monkey business till today. And you're not willing to go away from, from your Diobandi ways and from your deviant ways because khalas, you've, you've been uh, uh, nurtured with this poisoned milk your entire life. 
And so now you cannot even comprehend or understand. You you have the audacity to lie the entire time and then you make a big lie and you even twist it and now make it seem that as though I am claiming that Sheikh Fawzan is a liar and a sinner. Yeah, akhi, you, wallahi, aib. Wallahi, I'm, 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 perple- I'm amazed. How do you sleep at night? By Allah, how do you put your head on the pillow and have a peaceful night sleep when you know that you're a criminal of this degree? You are this much of a criminal, ya akhi. How? Or the shaitan has beautified your deviant so much that you don't even know. Fawzan has said that about Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, that Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have not said themselves. He has spoken upon Allah without proof. So my brothers, Abu Mus'ab made this video to cloud the whole situation. He still has many things that he has not answered regarding the sitting of Allah, the challenge sits. Habibi, there's nothing that I have not answered regarding the sitting of Allah. I've already explained it to you in very straightforward terms with evidences. All you're trying to do right now is you want to claim that you have some hidden uh, access or knowledge to some document or some mistranslation that alleges that Sheikh Ibn Uthameen held another position and all of that I have. Even this false translation that you have that is not in line with the Sheikh's other words, I have. All of this is ready, but believe me, believe me, it's easy for me to open OBS and refute you right now. It takes a lot of work to do the preparation for that and the recording. And I have priorities. Bi'idhillahi Azza wa Jal. I'm going to Dubai to give some more lectures, inshallah, and guide the people to the proper deen. Then I'm going to Malaysia to do more da'wah. I have more important things than and re- replying to you. This I'm doing as entertainment with some beneficial knowledge for those who are seeking the truth. The other matter, it's going to come. Even though I should not respond because I've already responded, but I am forced to dumb it down so much to make it click in your tiny little brain and that is somewhat irritating but you're right you're right until i go ahead and do so you have one on me see look at the difference between us at least i am willing to take an l i will take an l i should have responded to you about this issue way before it is my fault that i was busy watching something else or i was busy uh, entertaining the world cup because i thought that you in terms of priority you were like somewhere way at the bottom of the list but then again maybe that was not the best decision it is a matter of religion at the end of the day it should be addressed and your biskeen followers are having uh, uh, the time of their life because i have not responded and all they oh let him go back to vacation oh it's vacation time you see me on vacation here i am responding but you know hey he's running from that in the past then we made a video highlighting his ignorance in the arabic language in the past, you made a video highlighting the, my ignorance of the Arabic language. That was like a couple of days ago. And you didn't highlight any ignorance. You, and if anything, you expose yourself for for your lies. I, I proved, I believe I've pro- proven beyond the shadow of doubt that I actually know those grammatical uh, conjugation and the, 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 gra- the grammar. And I've also admitted that I have mistakes and those mistakes have to be rectified. And I have absolutely no problem with that. What you really have proven is that you guys don't, don't mind lying. You, you've proven that you guys have the ability and the audacity to lie and feel good about it and deceive your followers again and again. You've proven nothing in that video whatsoever except that you made mocked me, which is fine. And then you you could see in, within the video how in other occasions I did not make those mistakes, suggesting that I actually know the rule. And I've explained to you most of these rules as well. Why did you not speak about that? Why did your followers not speak about that? Because you guys are not truth seekers. You, you see what I'm saying? To cloud this and to cover this and to run from this, He's now bringing these side things and even in this he's being exposed so badly that without realizing he's attacking the most senior scholars of the Wahhabiya. I'm attacking the most senior scholars of Wahhabiya. Ya akhi, where do the lies stop? Ya akhi, wallah, aib. What are you saying? What Sheikh Fawzan said has nothing to do with your mistranslation. Your mistranslation of the ayah 
you're avoiding the proper translation of the ayah, you adding words, injecting meanings that are not found in the ayah or the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, you're giving a new meaning to the word adhiyah that is not found in the Quran and the Sunnah. And I challenge you to break the Bufassireen. I challenge you to bring from your Mufassireen, whatever Mufassir of whatever denomination of the deviance that you're upon, I challenge you to bring one of them that says that the meaning of Yudun Allah wa Rasulahu is equates or if somebody curses or abuses the Sahaba of the Prophet ﷺ, this means that the Prophet ﷺ will probably cry in his grave or is hurting in his grave. I challenge you to do that. And that's what is expected of you. Subhanallah. So what do we learn from this brothers? Abu Mus'ab has done himself major damage. I, have, I will show you this on the... I have not done any major damage to myself brother. If anyone has done damage, it's you. You've done damage by first deceiving your followers, by being insincere, by not being able to quote a single ayah where I made a mistake. And I challenge you if you are sincere, if you are sincere, if I'm being exposed, I challenge you to expose Muhammad Hijab's Quranic recitation mistakes and his citations that he does where he butchers half of the ayat and he misquotes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the entire time. If you are sincere, I challenge you to treat me the same way you, you to treat Muhammad Hijab the same way that you treat me right now. If if your followers haven't picked up on the type of lies that you guys are about and that you have a hidden agenda and you have animosity and you have preconceived notions against us and that you just hate Salafis and Salafiyya, then I feel very sorry for your followers. I think at this point they should all realize that something is wrong with what you're doing. Something is wrong with what you're presenting. There's something very fishy about what's going on. You've added words. You've, cl you've lied against me again. You've claimed that Sheikh Fawzan... I'm saying that he is a liar and a sinner when I never said that. He is speaking about al adhiyah which is confirmed in the Quran, confirmed in the Hadith Qudsi, and confirmed in, in, in the, the book of Imam al I challenge you to read the Kitab al-Sunnah of Imam al-Bahari to your followers. Akhi, by Allah, I ask you, by Allah, read the Kitab al-Sunnah of Imam al-Bahari. Brothers, do you know that this entire book is refutations against them? Look, he speaks there about al-Rad ala al-Nas, ala ta'til wa zandaqa Ta'til is those who deny Allah's names and attributes like this Jahmi, like this, this, this guy in front of you right there. وَهِيَ رَفْضُ الْكِتَابُ السُنَّةِ زَنْدَكَ is to reject the Quran and the Sunnah وَالْأَخْذُ بَدَلَهُمَا بِالْأَهْوَاءِ وَرَغَبَاتِ and to replace them and take instead desires and, and whims. You are looking at a classic example of someone who is following. The whole book of Imam al-Sunnah is actually the Kitab al-Sunnah by Imam Barbahari, who is an Imam of the Sunnah, is refuting those individuals, those Mubtadi'ah. They want to cite the book of the Imam and they want to get the Sharh of Imam from the Wahhabiyyah to prove something and then this entire project failed. Because nowhere did Sheikh Fawzan say that the Prophet ﷺ is probably crying in his grave, nor did he say that he's hurting in his grave. He said the term adhiya, and I gave you the ayah and the hadith about it, and they don't mean that. So you, Abdul Halim, is a liar against Allah and his Messenger ﷺ. You are a liar for covering up for his lie. You are a liar for trying to deceive your followers by not being sincere and honest with them and by giving them a false perception about what the ayah means in order to double down on your deviance because you are exactly as described in the Quran and the Sunnah. You are the people of ahwa. You are the people of desires, the people who favor their intellect over the textual evidence, the people who approach the texts with, with, with their so-called intellect and they dismiss the apparent meaning of the Quran and the Sunnah out of whims. Why did you not reply to the, the hadith of the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and the people seeing him and Allah showing them his shin? Why did you not address that? Why did you focus on this one? Why, my brother? My brother, I feel bad for your followers, Wallahi. Wallahi al -azim, I feel bad for them. Wallahi masakin. May Allah Azza wa Jal guide them. I hope some of them at this point say, you know what? No, you know, we need to check what these Mawlanas are doing. Maybe this halwa eating is really messing up with their brain. It is about time that some of them wake up and see that you're lying all the time. Akhi, you've been lying for a long time, you and him. All of these videos you have in each other lying against the ulama of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. It is absolutely abhorrent and disgusting. And every time you get exposed, you come up with a new lie to cover up for the old lie. For how long, ya akhi? For how long? Until the angel of death snatches your soul. 
then it's not going to benefit you. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٌ On the day where no wealth or, or, or children will be of any benefit except he who comes to Allah with a sound heart. This is a sound heart. You call this a sound heart. You know very well that I know grammar. And you know very well that I made some mistakes. But you're trying to tell the people that I don't know any grammar. Even though this is my mother language and I learned it in school. I'm not the greatest grammarian but I know grammar. You're trying to pretend that I don't know harf al jarr wa ism al majrur well, you know very well that I do know it. Aren't these lies, Akhi? Let's just be, let's just, let's call a spade a spade. Let's be honest and sincere. Aren't these lies, Akhi? Aren't these lies? Isn't it a lie right now when you say that Sheikh Fawzan believes exactly what uh, Abdul Halim believes? And so, therefore, according to you, I'm saying that both of, our, both of them are lying against Allah and His Messenger, while Sheikh Fawzan is saying that uh, Adiyah to the Messenger of Allah is also extended into the life to come. And you're saying that Prophet is probably crying in his grave and he's hurting in his grave, both of which Sheikh Fawzan did not say, or Imam Barbahari, or no one else for this matter. This is from the uh, shayateen that were uh, driving Mawlana Abdul Halim uh, in excitement during his uh, protest. This is from his, uh, yani, mashallah, tabarakallah, from the innovation and the uh, revelation he was receiving from the shayateen at that moment and you're sitting here championing his opinion and championing his position and ignoring all the other things that we're calling you out for yeah you need hidayah badly the screen page 100 and uh, well, it's not coming up too clear. You, yeah, you cannot figure out by now that it's not going to come up on the screen like this. Yeah, come on, man. Grow up, bro. Learn. Yeah, page 100. And the admin and the editors. It cover as well. Barbahana wa ta'ala. That this man is nothing but a liar. Him. I'm a liar. Okay. If you insist. But I think it's clear for everybody who the real liar is. If your people still haven't seen it, I feel pity and sorry for them. I hope that Allah Azza wa Jal shows them the light. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka tu. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.